Hi everybody, it's Mallory Donahue. Just getting everything all started up here. Hello and welcome to the Self Sewn Wardrobe. Um, this broadcast was originally available on uh, Facebook as a Facebook Live video in the Self Sewn Wardrobe group. So if you are interested in seeing live videos, getting all the visuals here, and uh, getting special coupon codes for uh, the group members, go to facebook.com slash groups slash self sewn wardrobe. And I will wait a little bit here for people to join in on Facebook. Good morning, Marissa and Charlotte and Sandy. Um, we are talking today about easy tea, fit, and flatter. Um, some of the concerns that maybe you might have with the easy tea, um, or if you started drafting your easy tea patterns, uh, perhaps some things to keep in mind as you go and do so. And um, I, I didn't expect today's broadcast to be as uh, involved as yesterday's, but it, it's turning out to be. So uh, sorry about being a little late. Hello, Eric and Sandy and Zenobia and Fred. It is good to see you all. Um, and then if you are listening to this as a podcast, which uh, everyone will be able to do quite soon, uh, feel free to give us a review on iTunes or um, wherever you like to listen to podcasts, but leaving a review on iTunes would be great. So I appreciate that. Hello, Melissa. And we'll just go ahead and get started on uh, the Easy Tea discussion. So a few people have already made the Easy Tea. They look fabulous. Uh, Fred has made one. Mary, Sandy has made two uh, so far, I believe. The first person to make one was Dot from Australia, and that was so exciting to see one so early in the game, and we very much appreciate you uh, getting that shirt done, Dot. And I just want to say, this is pretty encouraging. I've received a couple of questions about the Easy Tea, but nothing so... Uh, you know, terrible that I think we like missed something, you know, huge. So I, I'm very happy about that. Hello, Sierra. Hello, Margaret. And hello to your girls. I bet they are with you right now. So let's talk a little bit about the easy T and about fit and flatter. And the two terms that I'm going to be using in this broadcast are flappy and boxy. And I, you know, sometimes there, you know from looking at patterns and fashion magazines and from just being alive that there are tons of different silhouettes that get um, like, uh, what do I want to say, proposed by the fashion world, okay? Uh, so there are people, you know, running around wearing hats made out of their own hair and stuff like that. So, you know, you can make your shirt look however you wish, but I think these are two concerns that are going to come up with the easy T, and they are questions, uh, they're the answers to questions that some people have already asked. So uh, flappy and boxy, let's get down to it. First off, let's talk about uh, flappy, okay? So the Easy T, like I said, semi-fitted shirt, and it doesn't have a set-in sleeve. Um, I'd say it's almost like a kind of a kimono-type garment because the sleeve is just incorporated into the T. And I am wearing one right now if you are uh, watching this video. And actually, I think I need to redraft my Easy T pattern because I um, am... I keep slimming down and I drafted these when I was still uh, carrying some extra weight. Um, so I so I have these easy tees that are like slightly too large for me right now and I will tell you that I'm definitely not going to alter them. I'm just gonna save them for next time. Uh, you know next next time I have more weight um, my body I'm sure will fluctuate with you know uh, the next baby and everything so I think it'd be worth it for me to just keep these ones that are a little larger for next time. Oh, and Sierra says her little girl Ramona is watching, so hello. Hello, Ramona. Um, okay, so this is my easy tea pattern that I'm showing you here. You can see pictures of this on the website, um, and you can see uh, lots of pictures of it on our Instagram feed. And what is uh, particular to my body about this pattern is that I have a large chest measurement, okay? but I don't have a large bust. So why I bring that up is because my chest measurement isn't made up of a like of actual like breast tissue. I have a small cup size. And so 
why I bring that up is because my large chest measurement, it, it sort of continues up to my armpits. And so my sleeve hem measurement and that plot that is pointed, it's not too far outside my bust measurement. They're pretty close together. And if you have seen the class, you know that the two points I'm talking about are points C and J. Um, I think something that's going to be surprising to a lot of people is that many people's high shoulder point to sleeve hem measurement to get the length of their sleeve is going to be pretty similar amongst people who actually have pretty different body types, okay? So I think a lot of people are going to be within a similar range there, but where a lot of people differ are in their bust measurement. So since my points are so close together, along the x-axis, right? The x-axis of a graph is horizontal and the y-axis is vertical. Um, since my points are so close together, when I went to draw that curve, the dressmaker's curve fit so easily between those lines and that is what I used in the video. I did include a PDF document in module one of the class that shows a little bit different silhouette uh, that I, I think a lot of you will have. I, it's not like a, you know, a problem or something like that. Um, it's just the way people are shaped. And I'm going to turn around my handy dandy pattern uh, display here. And I've just got a little mock-up of someone, a mystery person. Um, <laughs> I just sort of made this up this morning. Someone who has a similar sleeve hem measurement. Okay, so similar width up there on top of their shirt, but they have a smaller bust measurement. And when I say smaller bust, I don't necessarily mean smaller cup size, okay? It's it's possible, okay, I wear like a barely A cup and yet I have a 40 inch bust measurement. My mom wears like a G or an H and her bust measurement is 38. What this means is really her body is much more slender than mine, but she actually like has that breast tissue like sticking out, you know, so uh, from the front of her body. So this is where this, uh, you know, comes into play with someone with actually a larger bust, but a smaller bust measurement, or for someone who just has a smaller bust measurement. And Fred, I'm kind of looking at you. Fred has volunteered to classify herself as a piece of celery. Okay, so you know that there are always those magazine um, descriptions of women and it's like you're pear shaped, you're apple shaped, you're a, a cucumber. Um, Sam says she's an eggplant. Uh, <laughs> I'm a cucumber. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm like straight up and down and thick. Uh, so th this is very similar to what mom's pattern piece looked like, what I have kind of here and what I draw in the PDF. Okay. Um, oh, Marissa just shared her measurements. They're very close to mine. What I want to bring up with this is you might not have just a curve between points C and J, okay? Um, you might go straight on these lines. And some of the feedback we got when we uh, released the EZT class to testers is they said, hey, you connected point C and J with that dressmaker's curve, but first you had us draw those perpendicular lines. Why'd you have us do that? Because on, you know, on your pattern, it looks like you just connect them. And that's totally right. On my pattern, it does look like I just connect them. But for other people, it may be different. And this is this was like, well, besides mom giving birth to me, this is one of her big contributions to the class that I think is so important. So um, let's think about this for a second. This line here that goes out to point J is your bust measurement. We told you to take that measurement at your fullest part of your bust. So it should be the really the biggest part of your upper body, okay? Um, if you follow directions and how to measure. So technically you could go straight up and you wouldn't be shortchanging yourself above your bust because you should have measured at your fullest measurement, okay? So you can actually go straight up from J for a bit. And as well, you can go straight over from point C, you can keep those straight lines. And I know that we are people who are made of curves. Um, we are not two dimensional people, but I think that as you go into this journey of pattern making, you'll find that really you do need some straight lines in there. So I'm going to draw this curve. And if you're listening to this as a podcast, you know, uh, go check out uh, the video link. I, I will be posting that or, you know, go watch this um, video in the Facebook group. And I'm going to draw the line that would be appropriate for this pattern.
Okay. Oh, I did a better job on that than I thought I would. Okay. So, uh, uh, excuse me for the pause, but I just want to show that you, uh, you know, you can go straight a little bit on those lines. If you do what I did in the video and you don't read the PDF beforehand, um, or, or you're like, I don't want this to be too tight on my bust and I'm very worried. And you draw a curve that goes directly from point C to J like this. Okay maybe a little curvier than that. Um, but you can end up, that's a ton of extra fabric there. That's gonna be like almost four extra inches of like bat wingy stuff underneath your arms. And what do bat wings do? Um, they could make you look heavier. They could make you um, annoyed. <laughs> they, or you could like them, okay? But if you feel, if you look at them and you love them, then go wear your easy tee and be happy. But if you look at them and you say, this makes me look flappy, I am not happy, ha ha ha. Go back to your pattern. And it's just really important to respect the points that we drafted because those points were supposed to be your fullest part and your bicep measurement has an inch of ease in it. And Fred says she likes the flaps, good. So I'm very happy about that, Fred. The other thing that too much fabric beneath, beneath, excuse me, the armpit can do is if you have your arm straight out from your side and you raise it up, if the sleeve and the armhole isn't close like to your armpit, it can end up raising the entire shirt sometimes. And that is something that can make people unhappy. So actually a closer fitting garment, a closer well fitting garment in the arm's eye area around the bicep can actually make it so your range of motion is better. So I know sometimes we think like, oh, a, like a, a baggier or a more loosely fitting garment will allow for more range of motion. And it's not always particularly true. So this is something that you might want to take into account when you are drafting or perhaps altering the fit of your pattern. Okay, so we've covered flappy, all right? And the next thing I want to talk about is boxy. Okay, so this goes into another bust thing. And actually, I'm sort of addressing Marty with this. She asked a really good question um, earlier in the week. And her comment on the video that she left just now is, I love the way you and your mom both are so factual and non-judgy in the way you talk about body shape. Yes, I want us to be able to all say, I have like, you know, uh, a big butt or a small bust or this or that. You know, I think it's important if certain... If anything I say makes you feel uncomfortable, well, first of all, I apologize. I don't want to make anybody uncomfortable. But the other thing is, how would it make you feel if someone just came up to you and you said, like, oh, you have um, <laughs> a, a slender forearm measurement or or you have a I'm just trying to think of something really arbitrary you have small ears um comments about the body in general can make us uncomfortable they're not generally nice things to say uh to people who you don't know they're not things that we should really be focusing on as we uh, make friends or you know judge people's value but just you know in our context we're talking about bodies in a way that can help you to be more comfortable so just keep in mind that if I ever say something like I altered this to fit me better here, but you know, you prefer the way I didn't like it, we are still on the same page. You know, Fred says she likes the bat wings, but I know a few people um, could get in trouble there. I think especially larger busted people. And mom, mom said, she's like, the flaps, I don't like all this fabric under my arms. It makes me look like an old lady. And, I, and you know what? Mom doesn't want to look like an old lady and that is fine. Okay. So just everybody gets to do what they want. All right, Marty. So I want to get back to sort of the question that you asked and something that's come up uh, in the past. People would say something like, is there a full bust adjustment for the easy T or uh, Marty had said, I am worried about this fitting my shoulders and my bust area. Okay, the shoulder and the bust area really should not be a problem for the easy T whatsoever because if your bust is 36 inches or 28 inches or 59 inches or whatever, if you write down the correct number and you add the ease and you divide it, it should be the correct size for you like really we all know that no matter how large or, or small or whatever that means you know bodies that we have if there's the right amount of fabric it will go over us okay so keep that in mind and so marty has a a big um a, a very large bust and um 
and she shared that in the group before, so I hope you don't mind me saying that, Marty. Uh, so she's got a pretty large bust, so she's, wor she's worried about fitting that part. That's the part that has caused her problems, I would imagine, in other patterns or just something she needs to adjust for. I think that in this particular instance for this class and this pattern, what our large busted ladies um, are going to need to worry about is how the t-shirt looks actually from the bust down, okay? This t-shirt is made of a woven fabric. It has no darts, okay? It has uh, no like princess seams or anything like that. We put it on over our heads so it has no closure. So when we say semi-fitted, we mean like not very fitted, okay? So my concern for those of you busty gals out there, and Glenda also brought this up, um, she was worried about too much fabric in the waist or looking boxy, worried that the large bust measurement might define the entire look of the garment, okay? So that's a, that's a very real concern. And this is where the fabric suggestion comes in, okay? This is where this comes in. I think that for a very large busted person that is stiffer fabric, like the linen easy tee I was wearing yesterday, uh, it's a cotton linen blend, so it's it's um it's just a stiff cotton linen. There are drapey linens out there, and linen does soften over time, but this one's a cotton linen, so it's a little heftier. Um, those types of shirts on a large busted person, I think, might make them look a little boxy. Now, if you like the way that looks, go for it. Um, something that will help on the easy tee is you measure your high shoulder point to bust measurement. So on a person who has a large bust, their bust might be, you know, their, their breasts might be up and in the quote unquote right place, you know, supported and like out in front of their body, not hanging down, you know, uh, in unsupported land. But your high shoulder point to apex measurement, like from your, basically from your neck to your nipple, is going to be longer than mine because your breasts are further out in front of you. And so that's, uh, that point gets plotted in the easy tee class. So hopefully that fullest part of the shirt, it lands in the correct place, okay? But we need to make sure um, that we don't narrow in the the shirt too much at the waist, okay? Uh, that's very important because we have to put it on over our shoulders, okay? So that's why I incorporate, like I, I say to really use the, the flowy fabric. And um, there we go. Uh, Marty says, a little boxy. From my personal experience, I look like I'm wearing a burlap bag if it's a stiff fabric cut to my bust measurement. A very pretty bag, but a bag nonetheless. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, um, if you if you got a bust that's like a lot larger than your hips, and then, you know, your so your legs are down there, you know, <laughs> you, you can look very boxy. That's why, you know, you can even go so far as to like make this out of a poly chiffon that is sheer and then wear a tank top under it. But what this shirt, and I hope what this class see, uh, hopes, hopes what, I, what I want it to do is for you to get familiar with pattern drafting, and I didn't want to go and put out something that's got two darts in it or princess seams in it to draft. I think that that's a little, you know, advanced. I know some of you know how to do that, but that's what the easy D class is all about. So do make sure that you um, follow the measurement directions. Give yourself credit for every inch of your beautiful body. Sandy labeled her pattern size awesome, okay? Uh, and just just make sure that uh, you do that. Now, there's another point on this pattern. I'm gonna turn my pattern around a little bit. And this is the, this is the question that Glenda brought up. She has a very hourglass figure. Um, I believe that there was over 10 inches difference between her waist and bust. And so that's not me. Um, you know, I, I don't have that. And she was worried about the amount of fabric that would be swishing around her waist. She didn't want to be swimming in fabric. And I can definitely um, uh, relate. I, I don't want that either, okay? Uh, I Oh, and Glenda's watching. Hi, Glenda. I, I don't want that either, but once again, the fabric on this shirt should make it so that if you have a very, if you have a lot of sort of ease or extra fabric in the waist, it doesn't make you look boxy. It doesn't get in your way. Um, the fabric then should also skim over your hips, which from Glenda's measurements that she wrote me about are more than 10 inches larger than her waist. 
So make sure, you know, all of this really, it should skim, it should skim over your body. And but because we, you know, we say it's semi-fitted. When I draw my side seam uh, uh, line in the class, I say, you probably won't get uh, you know, anywhere close to your waist measurement. And then a few people are like, oh, I'm a little worried about that or da 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 da. And so anyway, uh, keep in mind, you have a point plotted for your shoulder up here, okay, point B. And you need to make sure that you don't taper in too much because your shoulders, okay, uh, that point B is actually like to your shoulder joint, so it's not like your whole shoulder width. But keep that in mind. You got to get your whole body through there. Um, and uh, Lauren says, I definitely had to measure twice to make sure I had the numbers and plots right. Accurate measurement, measuring is the key to being happy with this shirt and uh, with this pattern, with this class. And that's why in the measurement video, I have you actually mark on your body with a Chaco liner or, you know, whatever. I mean, you could even like stick, you know, safety pins in your clothing if you wish. So um, just keep that in mind. And I, uh, you really need to know the height of all those measurements. Um, Marissa says, my first draft was too narrow at the waist, didn't have my dress fingers curved yet. And I think that's my fault, Marissa. <laughs> um, so it was too tight between the waist and hem. My second went straight from bust to hip. Now I'm doing a third that will be in between. So if you're kind of messing around with this, you know, curve, I, I say, I'm glad to hear that, Marissa, and I'm glad that you're not getting like discouraged, okay? Um, because this is a learning experience. If you've never done anything like this before, you might, you know, need to do a couple of shirt drafts. A video that I would like to add in very soon is how to make pattern adjustments. So if you actually put on the easy tee and then you like nip it in the waist or something, how do you go transfer that to your pattern? You know, da 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 da. Uh, oh, Marty says one craftsy class recommends use those sticker dots you buy at the office supplies for marking points on the body. That's a good idea. Yeah, do stickers. Absolutely. That's a good idea. Um, so uh, keep that in mind. And Eric commented, he said, my waist goes out, I it's convex, it's a convex curve. So I must admit that I did not um, account for that in the easy T pattern. So if your waist is larger than your bust and hip measurement, really what you need to do is you need to add some ease in there and plot that point and then, you know, use your dressmaker's curve or your ruler or um, freehand that side seam. So do keep that in mind if there are, if there is anyone uh, drafting a shirt and their waist is larger than their bust or hips, I don't add any ease to the waist in the pattern, but you will need to. So I hope that that addresses some of the concerns or um, perhaps uh, some people's you know, feedback on the easy tee. Uh, Sandy also posted a picture of her easy tee that she had made out of double gauze. And she says it feels really good. She says it was, she didn't know if it was quite right. And I don't know, um, Sandy, like if there was something specific about that easy tee that you didn't like. But if you were worried about it being a little too stiff, like not quite as flowing, because I know the double gauze is soft, but it does, it's kind of has some structure, you know. Um, I don't know. I would say like, that's what that shirt likes. And you can have a flowing one and you can have a kind of a stiffer one or something like that. You know, I, I, um, I like that cotton and linen one I have. It's not something that when I put it on, I think, wow, this really shows off my womanly curves, you know, but that's okay. I did like go on a bike ride in it and it was awesome. Okay. So but you can have different, you know, garments that sort of do different things. I almost, that a stiffer one for me, it almost feels a little bit like I'm wearing like a super functional piece of clothing that is almost, it's, it seems really strong to me and uh, almost like I'm wearing a beautiful apron. I don't know if that attracts anyone or not. <laughs> and then we are going to post directions about how to make the easy tee out of knit. And that will uh, include decreasing the amount of ease. A few of you, I think Mary made hers out of knit. Um, uh, if you guys want to go for that, I made mine out of a, out of a sweater knit and I made a short sleeve like sweater and I love it. I can't wear long sleeves. I mean, I, I can but I feel really 
trapped by that decision to put on a long sleeve shirt. But when it does get cold, I put on that short sleeve sweater and I'm like warm, but I'm not too hot. I'm, I'm kind of a warm person. So, oh, Sandy says about her double gauze shirt, she says, that's true, I'm wearing it to work today and I can move and sweat with ease. So just keep it in mind, experiment, you know. But I do think that, I think the easy tee, if you can follow the directions and kind of play around, it should really set you up for uh, I think maybe a little bit more success than normal because you should be getting a really good starting point with it, with your measurements and your bust height and all of that. I think, I, I hope that those things really help people. Okay, so that's going to do it for today. I have tons of things to talk to you guys about. Um, a few topics that have been suggested are like, how pattern makers draft patterns with ease and, and how to determine how much ease you should add. And, and I do want to talk about the sort of the concept of from patterns to garments and from design to pattern to garment. Because I think even if you are not a pattern designer, I think that knowing that process a little better can help you to understand how to fit your clothing. And uh, Noah had asked some questions about altering patterns. So there's just tons of stuff to talk about that I hope to get to next week. And um, I really enjoy speaking with you all. Oh, and then I just want to mention one product that we're going to be adding to the shop are serger thread packs. So a couple of you were asking about, about those. And we're going to package together um, little color families of serger thread for you. And... Uh, that's going to be, I think, helpful for some of you who take our advice about color blending and thread shopping. And then, I don't know why I didn't do this at first, but, uh, you know, I tell you to buy, you know, uh, four lights and four darks or something like that. Well, why don't I just package them together for you and take a little bit off the price for buying four, right? Um, so last night I texted Sam and Becca. I just texted them. I said, Serger Thread collections or a serger thread bundles or something like that and then someone asked this exact question in the Facebook group this morning so thank you so much for asking that question um I really appreciate it and thank you so much for watching and listening once again if you're listening to this as a podcast please go and give us a review on iTunes it'd be very helpful and you all have a fabulous day